Hi guys, it's Miss Dana coming to you from Mikasa. Um, we are getting ready to do video number two. Well, this is video number two. Um, today we're going to continue with only the best for Suki. So go ahead and take out your text. It is the same text that we used yesterday. Um, we're going to read the same story again today, but we're going to look at some different story elements. So instead of just looking at the who, the what, the where, the when, and the why, we're going to take a look at character feelings. We're going to talk a little bit about um, how Suki and her dad were feeling throughout the story. We're going to do a little bit of genre talk. We're going to try to determine, was this story fiction or was it nonfiction? So you guys are going to have to dig deep in your brains to remember what we talked about when we talk about different genres. We're going to talk a little bit about author's purpose. Now, I know that's new, um, and for a lot of us, uh, we still haven't gotten it yet, but it's okay. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that today with this text here. So why did the author write this story? Were they trying to inform us? Were they trying to give us some information? Were they trying to entertain us, make us laugh or surprise us? Or were they trying to persuade us? Were they trying to convince us? or get us to do something in particular. And then last but not least, we are gonna talk about main idea. So at the end of the story, we're gonna talk about what is the main idea of this story um, and what exactly that means. So go ahead and take out your only the best for Suki text. Again, same story that we went over yesterday. Um, and I'm gonna read it to you twice because we know good readers read the story two times. So follow along as I read. I am on the first page and the first paragraph of Only the Best for Suki. When Suki, the rat's daughter, was old enough for marriage, Nozumi began thinking about finding a husband for her. Such was the custom in old Japan. Suki must have the best, Nozumi thought. I will find her the most powerful husband in the world. But when Suki heard of her father's plans, she frowned. There's no need to find any one father, she said. I have already chosen a husband. You've chosen? Unheard of, said Nozomi, shaking his head. I wish to marry Toro, Suki said. Suki and Toro had been friends since they were little. Nozomi knew that Toro was smart and strong, but Toro's parents were not rich or powerful. My Suki cannot marry a common rat, Nozumi said. I'll find someone powerful for my daughter. Nozumi traveled far and wide, but nobody met his high standards. Then, one day, as he sweltered in, his, in the heat, he had an idea. He climbed to the top of a mountain. Good day, son, Nozumi called. Surely no one is more powerful than you. I'd like you to marry my daughter. Sun smiled. True, I am powerful. Without my rays, nothing grows. He pointed to Cloud. When Cloud covers my face, my light dims. The world grows cold. As Cloud glided over him, Sun disappeared. Nozomi bowed to Cloud. Greetings, Cloud, he said. Then he repeated what he had said to the Sun. Cloud listened politely. Yes, I am powerful, he said. My rain quenches the thirsty earth, but here comes someone stronger. And wind blew cloud away. Clutching a tree, Nozomi shouted his wish to wind. Of course I am powerful, wind said. I turn windmills that grind grain, yet I am powerless against him. Wind pointed to the wall below. I cannot press through walls bricks. Nozomi hurried down the wall. At last, he had found the perfect husband for Suki. After Nozomi told Wall his wish, Wall said quietly, Yes, I am powerful. I keep enemies away. But right now, I'm afraid. Afraid? Nozomi asked. I'm afraid of those who tunnel under my bricks. I could crumble into rubble. Who could destroy someone as solid as you? Nozomi asked. Rats, Wall answered, like you. Nozomi thought about that 
and then let out a big laugh. Ha 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 ha. He waved at sun, cloud, and wind. He gave Wall a pat. Thank you, friends. I've learned so much today. He ran all the way home. My dear, he cried, hugging his daughter. Please forgive me. Suki was surprised. For what, father? For being too silly to see what you knew all along, Nozumi answered. And the next week, Nozumi happily attended the wedding of Suki and the powerful Taro the Rat. The end. All right, so that was our first read through. But like we said before, we know that good readers read the story two times. So I'm going to read it one more time to you. All right. All right. Starting at the top of page one, paragraph one of Only the Best for Suki. When Suki the rat's daughter was old enough for marriage, Nozumi began thinking about finding a husband for her. Such was the custom in old Japan. Suki must have the best, Nozumi thought. I will find her the most powerful husband in the world. But when Suki heard of father's plans, she frowned. There's no need to find anyone, father, she said. I have already chosen a husband. You've chosen? Unheard of, said Nozumi, shaking his head. I wish to marry Taro, Suki said. Suki and Taro had been friends since they were little. Nozumi knew that Taro was smart and strong, but Taro's parents were not rich or powerful. My Suki cannot marry a common rat, Nozumi said. I'll find someone powerful for my daughter. Nozumi traveled far and wide, but nobody met his high standards. Then, one day, as he sweltered in the heat, he had an idea. He climbed to the top of the mountain. Good day, son, Nozumi called. Surely no one is more powerful than you. I'd like you to marry my daughter. Sun smiled. True, I am powerful. Without my rays, nothing grows. But, he pointed to Cloud. When Cloud covers my face, my light dims. The world grows cold. As Cloud glided over him, Sun disappeared. Nozumi bowed to Cloud. Greetings, Cloud, he said. Then he repeated what he had said to Sun. Cloud listened politely. Yes, I am powerful, he said. My rain quenches the thirsty earth, but here comes someone even stronger. And wind blew Cloud away. Clutching a tree, Nozumi shouted his wish to wind. Page two. Of course I am powerful, Wind said. I turn windmills that grind grain, yet I am powerless against him. Wind pointed to the wall below. I cannot pass through wall's bricks. Hur Nozumi hurried down to wall. At last, he had found the perfect husband for Suki. After Nozumi told Wall his wish, Wall said quietly, Yes, I am powerful. I keep enemies away. But right now, I'm afraid. Afraid, Nozumi said? I'm afraid of those who tunnel under my bricks. I could crumble to rumble. Who could destroy someone as solid as you? Nozumi asked. Rats, Wall answered, like you. Nozumi thought about that, and then he had let out a big laugh. <laughs> he waved at sun, cloud, and wind. He gave Wall a pat. Thank you, friends. I've learned so much today. He ran all the way home. My dear, he cried, hugging his daughter. Please forgive me. Suki was surprised. For what, father? For being too silly to see what you knew all along, Nozumi answered. And the next week, Nozumi happily attended the wedding of Suki and the powerful Toro the Rat. The end. So 
What I want you guys to do now is I want you guys to take out your worksheet that looks like this. So it's still titled Only the Best for Suki, but this is for video number two. I'm gonna go ahead and get some markers. All right, awesome. So the first thing we're gonna talk about, we're gonna start off with genre. I know it's at the bottom of our sheet, but I feel like that's the easiest thing that we can start off with. What is the genre of this story? What is the genre of this story? So we know, just to do a little review, that when I say the word genre, I'm talking about is this story fiction or is it nonfiction? Now, I'm going to think to myself, what does that necessarily mean? What does a fiction story mean? Hmm. I know we talked a little bit about this in class, and since I don't have you guys in front of me, I'm just going to go ahead and go over it with you. So, when we have a fiction story, that means that it's not real. That means that something about our story cannot happen in real life. If we have a fiction story that, or a nonfiction story, that means that it's real. That means that this is something that probably happened during a period in history. This is something that actually happens in real life. So when we think about only the best for Suki, is this story a fiction story or a nonfiction story? So now when we're talking about the different story elements, like we did yesterday, right? We spoke about the different characters. Let me go get that sheet. We spoke about how we had multiple characters, right? We have Suki, Nizumi, Toro, Wind, Sun, Brick, and Cloud. Now, remember yesterday we went over the fact that although these characters in this story were talking, in real life, they can't actually speak, right? I know that we don't look at a cloud and the cloud doesn't say words to us. I know that the sun doesn't say things to us as well, right? We can't have conversations with the sun or the wind. So that tells us that this story is a fiction story. So I'm going to go ahead and write it. Make your paper match mine. We know that it's a fiction story because all characters even the earth elements like the wind, the sun, we're talking. And we know that if this was a nonfiction text, they would not be talking. All right, let's go back up to character feelings. So let's talk a little bit about these characters. Let's talk about the two main ones, right? We know our two main characters were Suki and Nizumi. Okay. How is Suki feeling throughout this story? How is Suki feeling throughout this story? Now, if I go back in my text evidence, right, because I know good readers always go back to text evidence to try to find evidence to support their answers. So, going back in the story, I'm going to look and see if I can find a piece of text evidence that would help me support the fact of, uh, that would help me figure out how Suki was feeling. Hmm. I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds of think time to go ahead and do that. All right, so how is Suki feeling? And what text evidence can we use to support that? So I know we don't have our list of character feelings in front of us that was left in the classroom, but hopefully you're talking to yourself or a parent about some character feelings that you think would relate to Suki. So if I had to figure out or name one character feeling to describe Suki, I would say that Suki was feeling excited.
Now, why is Suki excited? Suki's excited because she found someone that she wants to marry, right? Suki's said multiple times throughout our text that she's found someone that she wants to marry. So if I had to go to find an exact piece of text evidence, I would go to the third, fourth paragraph where Suki says, I wish to marry Toro, Suki said. So then the text goes on to describe how they've been friends for a while. So even though he was, he was smart and strong, right? So Suki's happy, happy and excited that she found a husband. So if you went ahead and wrote excited or happy, pat yourself on the back. We know that Suki is excited or happy because she found a husband. Go ahead and make a paper match mine. Give you some time to do that. Or you can feel free to pause this video and fill in your worksheet so that you get all the information. All right, so now we're gonna talk about how Nizumi is feeling. Nizumi, he's feeling upset, right, or frustrated. I know many of you guys like to use that word when we're talking about character feelings. So Nizumi is frustrated. Why is he frustrated? Well, Nizumi's frustrated because he doesn't think that Toro the rat is good enough for his daughter. Now again, using our text and going back into the text evidence to try to find a piece that supports that answer, I know that in the seventh paragraph, Nizumi says, the text says, Nizumi knew that Toro was smart and strong, but Toro's parents were not rich or powerful. My Suki cannot marry a common rat, Nizumi said. So this piece of text evidence supports the fact that Nizumi is feeling frustrated or, yeah, he's feeling frustrated because he doesn't want his daughter to marry a common rat. He doesn't want Suki. Frustrated because he doesn't want Suki to marry a common rat. Awesome. All right. So now we're going to move on. We're going to move on to author's purpose. So what is the author's purpose for writing this story? What is the author's purpose for writing this story? We know that author's purpose usually consists of three things, right? Writers write stories for three reasons mostly. It's either to one, give us a little bit of information, two, to persuade us to try to convince us to do something, or three, to entertain us, to make us laugh, or to surprise us. So I'm going to think to myself, hmm, what is the reason for writing, for the author writing this story? I'm going to go ahead and write it down. All right, hopefully you guys have the same answer. To entertain. All right. Because we spoke a little bit about the genre of the story before and that how it was a fiction book, right? And we have some earth elements that were talking, right? We had some animals that were talking. And usually how that doesn't really happen. The author is definitely trying to entertain us, right? to make us laugh or surprise us. All right, awesome, because I know I'm reading this story. I was surprised when I first read it to find that the animals and some earth elements were actually talking. All right, last thing, we're gonna talk about the main idea. What's the main idea of this story? What is the main idea of this story? Hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a minute to try to find or try to think of a sentence that gives us the main idea of this story.
30 more seconds. Ten more seconds. All right, so hopefully you guys had a sentence that was similar to mine. The main idea of the story is do not or don't judge someone by their size. Anyone can be powerful. So remember, Nozomi did not like Toro in the beginning because he wasn't big, because he wasn't powerful, or at least Nozomi felt that way. But after Nozomi went and spoke to the different earth elements, after he spoke to the sun, the wind, the cloud, he ended up finding out that rats, no matter how small, were indeed powerful, and that he was wrong from judging Toro because he was just a common small rat. So at the end of the day, we learn that it is not okay to judge someone by their size and that anyone can be powerful. So hopefully you got something very similar to that. Hopefully you got something that was exactly that. But go ahead now, take the next couple minutes to go ahead and fill in your worksheet to make it match mine. All right, awesome. All right, awesome. So hopefully you guys enjoyed video number two. And tomorrow we are going to go over, don't mind the paint on the walls. Tomorrow we are going to go over a new story and go over the story elements and use that graphic organizer to help us answer some multiple choice questions. Because as we get closer to park, um, I want us to start getting some more experience and exposure to working with some multiple choice questions and using text evidence to back up our answer. So that is all for today. Love you guys very much. Let me know if you have any questions. And when you are done filling out your worksheets, the independent worksheets along with the video worksheet, make sure you send a picture or have your parents take a picture of it and send it to my cell phone so I can give you guys credit for the work. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Love you. Bye.